export processing zones so these apzs they are usually strategically located near the ports of india itpo now this organization was set up by the government of india on 1st january 1992 the main job of this indian institution of foreign trade is to provide training in international business Hello everyone I am Purnima faculty in the department of commerce Vidyashram Pre University College Temple of Excellence Mysuru I welcome you all to this session now the exports are in India now the next measure undertaken is export finance now what do we mean by export finance so whenever there a exporter receives an export order so he requires two types of finance one is the pre shipment finance the other one is the post shipment finance now what do we mean by pre shipment finance this pre shipment finance is used by the exporter for the manufacture of goods in case he has to manufacture the goods which are to be exported then for the purchase of raw materials and all other uh, charges whatever he is incurring so all those will be funded by the pre shipment finance so whatever whenever there is a production of goods so all the production related expenses will be taken care of by the pre shipment finance now in case he is just buying the goods and selling it abroad then what are the all those expenses relating to the purchase of goods for exports so all those will be taken by care of by the pre shipment finance now what do we mean by post shipment finance so once the goods are produced and then they are loaded on board the ship then the exporter will have to wait till the payment comes from the importer so it will take a very long time since the goods have to be transported by sea and it has to reach the port of destination of the importer and only then the importer will be making payment for the goods now the exporter has to wait for a very long period until the payment comes from the importer now it is necessary for the exporter to see that he gets some post shipment finance until he gets the payment so he will be funded adequately now this post shipment finance it will be extended from the date of delivery of the goods up to the receiving the payment of the goods for that time frame this export finance houses they will be financing the exporters then next one is the export processing zones so these epzs they are usually strategically located near the ports of india you can find these export processing zones mainly in the ports of gujarat Uh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, that is Vishakhapatnam, etc. So all the export processing zones. So they will be manufacturing only those goods which are meant for exports, and these goods they will not charge any duty on these goods. As a result of which, these goods are high in quality and they will be low priced because there will not be any duty on these goods. So these goods can compete with the goods of the international quality wise and also the price wise then the next one is the 100% export oriented units this 100% export oriented units they were set up by the government of india in order to encourage exports of india so this 100% export units they enjoy lot of facilities from the government so these facilities relate to uh, cutting down of the excise duties they need not pay any excise duties they do not have any tax on their exports so they don't have to pay any sales tax etc so there are various facilities extended for these export 100% export oriented units so in this way the government of india has been encouraging the exports of india then next let us look into what are the organizational support so first one is 
the Department of Commerce. So this Department of Commerce comes under the Ministry of Commerce, which is set up by the Government of India. Now, what is the main job of this Department of Commerce? So this Department of Commerce, it strives to increase the trade relations with other countries. So it is personally responsible for the improvement of the external trade of the country. And it also formulates policies for the external trade in general and it also frames policies for import and export trade of India. Then second one we have the export promotion councils. So these export promotion councils were set up by the government of India under the Companies Act or it can be registered under the uh, Societies Registration Act. Now these export promotion councils were formulated for encouragement of exports in certain commodities. Already now we have 21 APCs which are functioning all over India. The main aim of setting up this export promotion council is to uh, encourage the promotion of exports of certain commodities. Then next one is the commodity boards. Now the commodity boards were set up by the government of India for the trade and promotion and also export of certain commodities. Now it has set up seven commodity boards. Some of them are the coffee board, we have the rubber board, we have the tea board, then the central silk board and we also have the coir board. So these boards are there. So they are exclusively there for increasing the production and also seeing that there is export of these goods to the foreign countries. Then the next one is the Export Inspection Council. Now this Export Inspection Council was set up by the government of India in 1963 for promoting quality products and also to see that almost all the goods which are exported, they have to just pass through the inspection of this uh, council. So this Export Inspection Council, it was set up under the Export Control Act of 1963 and it is mainly there for inspection of the exports. So all the exports, whatever the goods are to be exported, they will have to be inspected by this council and only then they can be exported. Then the next uh, important organization is Indian Trade Promotion Organization or the ITPO. Now this organization was set up by the government of India on 1st January 1992. Now it was registered under the Societies Registration Act and what is the main work of this Indian Trade Promotion Council? Firstly, it is in close interaction with the trade industry and the government of India. Secondly, it organizes trade fairs and exhibitions for the exporters of India. Thirdly, it also organizes uh, trade fairs and exhibitions abroad also so that the exporters of India can go abroad and exhibit their products. Then it also organizes, it also conducts research in new product development etc. Now where can we find this ITPO or the, or the Indian Trade Promotion Organization? We can find the offices in Mumbai, Delhi and Chennai and it also has its international offices in Germany, Japan etc. The next the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade. Now, what is the work of the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade? Now, this organization was set up in the year 1962 by the government of India. The main work of this institution is, firstly, it provides training for the Indian firms in international business. Secondly, it conducts research in international business. Thirdly, it analyzes and disseminates the information relating to international business. Then the next important organization is the Indian Institute of Packaging. Now what is the main job of this Indian Institute of Packaging? Firstly, it conducts training and research in the field of packaging. Secondly, it caters to the needs of the packaging manufacturing industry and also those industries which need packaging. And 
then thirdly it also caters to the needs of the exporters who are engaged in packing of the goods for exports then lastly we have the trade trading organizations now these trade trading organizations were set up by the government of india mainly to stimulate the export of trade in india so in addition to the trade trading organization we have the mmtc that is the metals and minerals trading corporations and we also have the handloom and handicrafts trading corporations they were set up mainly for exports next let us see what are the international institutions and trade agreements the first world war which was held between 1914 and 1919 and the second world war from 1939 to 1945 were accompanied by mass destruction of life and property the world over so the world has experienced two wars that is the first world war and the second world war because of which there was massive destruction all over the world so almost all the economies of the world were adversely affected due to the scarcity of resources countries were not in a position to take up risk construction or development works so because of massive uh, destruction all over the world all the countries were uh, unable to take up the risk construction works in their particular nations then even the international trade among nations got adversely affected because of the disruption of the world's currency system so what the trading was going on between the nations even that got disrupted because of these world wars then what was the solution for this the entire world was facing some sort of a depression and they wanted to come out of this depression now because of this the almost all the nations came together and they reached an agreement let us see what was the agreement now the 44 nations under the leadership of j m keynes a noted economist joined together at bretton woods near hampshire to identify measures to restore peace and normalcy in the world so almost 44 nations of the world they came together for a meeting which was conducted by j m keynes he was a noted economist and they thought of having a solution to their problem they wanted to identify what were the measures to restore peace and normalcy in the world now the meeting was concluded with the setting up of three international institutions namely the international monetary fund international bank for reconstruction and development and the international trade organization so when after the meeting was held so they uh, set up three international institutions the mainly the first one is the international monetary fund or the imf which is in existence now also and we also have the ibrd that is the international bank for reconstruction and development and they also set up the international trade organization so these three institutions were set up after the meeting at bretton woods then they considered that these three organizations are pillars of economic development of the world the world bank was assigned with the task of reconstructing war torn economies especially the ones in europe the imf was entrusted with the responsibility of ensuring stability of exchange rates to pay for the expansion of world trade now with the setting up of these three organizations so the meeting concluded and they just the, these three organizations were meant for the economic development of the world as a whole now what was the work of assigned to the world bank the world bank was assigned with the task of reconstructing the war torn countries of europe especially the ones in europe and the imf was entrusted with the responsibility of ensuring stabilization of the exchange rates so the world bank looked after the countries which were war torn in europe then imf was given the responsibility of 
stabilizing the exchange rates between the countries so that there will be expansion of world trade and the main objective of ITO was to foresee at that time was to promote and facilitate international trade among member countries by overcoming various restrictions and discriminations that were being practiced at that time. Now, what was the main aim of the ITO, the International Trade Organization? So, it had to promote international trade between countries. So, how to promote international trade? It had to remove, convince all the countries to remove all the restrictions and discriminations between nations so that there was a free flow of trade between the all the nations. The first two institutions that is IBRD and IMF came into existence immediately. So out of the three institutions, so IBRD and the IMF, they came into existence. An arrangement to liberalize international trade from high customs tariffs and various other terms of restrictions called the General Agreement for Trade and Tariffs came into existence. Now, the next important measure taken up by after this meeting was, so they had an arrangement to liberalize the international trade from high customs tariffs. Now, whenever they were engaging in international trade, they used to levy high custom tariffs and other type of restrictions. Now, in order to remove all these high custom tariffs and liberalize the foreign trade, they formed this GATT, that is the General Agreement for Tariffs and Trade. So, with this, we come to the end of this session Hope you have all followed whatever I have done in this session. Thank you.